So this is the catapult I made a few days ago, and we are going to revisit the file and correct some of the issues that came up while I was working on this one. And I have a concept for a switch that I'm going to develop. And the first and foremost thing is to revisit the Illustrator file, make some adjustments, and see what I can come up with. So let's go to the Illustrator file, take it from there. Okay, we open up the old file from a couple days ago. A couple of the first things I wanted to do, I needed some more clearance in this cross member. So I just use a shape to, sh to cut out the scallop and then I use my Bezier curves. Use the point selection tool to reveal your Bezier handles. And now I'm combining some parts to make the switch area and the back axle thicker. I'm improving the hook on my lever arm and I'm checking its incident where it will approach the cross member. Put a stopper on there like I put in the last one. And I know that I might need some clearance here, so I just cut out, move some of the point selections around, and I pivot it down just to see kind of where it might live. And I'm giving myself a little bit more of an allowance just in case things aren't exactly accurate. Cutting a hole through that back axle to make room for this switch concept I have. Now I'm looking at it in plan right now. I just make a little piece of material in half inch thick just to represent looking down in plan at that shape and how that might intersect. And I need a switch and I need a stopper and I need a lever. And so I'm just adding pieces and combining them in the Pathfinder, combining parts and uh, just pivoting it just to see how it looks. And here now I'm just imagining that that's the arm coming down and I'm just gonna remove some material. And the point selection tool, if you push uh, select a point in any angle, it gives you a little handle to pull and that creates a, you could do a, a, a fillet. So now I'm looking at all the parts and I kind of had this loose idea of making it look like an old school model. I create a line, I create an offset, so I do a, a bounding box and I put an offset, and now I have to connect them all. I always make a copy before I start committing to stuff, so I made a copy and pulled it off, that's why you see it there on the cutting board. And now I'm just making little quarter inch pieces, starting to connect everything that's laid out, knowing that I'll bandsaw them all apart later, or that if I share this file, people who get it will bandsaw them as a, apart as well. I wanted this to kind of look like a piece of art, whether you take it apart or put it together. Or we'll leave it together, I should say. And of course, I want to brand it, so I bring up my logo. Bring up any font, create outlines, put that font over a piece of imagery, have it cut through. That little uh, red dot represents a cutting head. I want to make sure it fits everywhere, an eighth inch cutting head. And I made the logo as small as I could with the eighth inch cutting head fitting everywhere. Then I delete that cutting head image. I don't need it anymore. And just doing some modifications to the bucket scoop and I saved the file and now I'm ready to CNC. And if you guys are patient with me, I'm just going to do another little commercial right here. The doors are closing this Thursday in just a couple of days if you're looking for a final Christmas gift or just something very cool that you can unbox when it arrives. I have released the Duresta Razor Box. If you're watching this before Thursday, you can click the link in the description below. Inside, you will find the razor box that includes my giant razor blade, my 9-inch Duresta skeleton knife, the die-cast belt loop, the real brass raised stamp sticker, a New York I make plate iron-on patch. Plus, for all of those that purchase, I will be hosting an exclusive live Q&A for you when you can bring your questions, where I'll be there to answer all things make and life as a creator on YouTube. But the door to taking orders will close this Thursday. So simply click the link in the description below to snag yours before Christmas. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And there it is. I cut three of them. And I didn't run the vacuum just so I can get this beautiful shot of it being blown away in slow mo. But this is uh, interesting. I. A lot of work actually to cut and leave all those small pieces in there. All that waste had to be held down with tabs because I don't want little pieces jumping around. The biggest problem would be breaking the bit while you're in the middle of the cut. But here you see me just band sawing everything apart. So the nice thing about this is I could sell it, ship it, or give it away. And it's in a nice contained package. Now this is the switch. 
and it actually worked out nice. And you'll notice how in Illustrator I was able to kind of look down on it just like that with some representative lines and it seems like it's going to work fine. Ultimately I don't put a spring on it but I could simply put a spring on it or even a rubber band if this is going to be a kit made by a kid or a boy scout or something. You just got to drill that hole there on my left thumb. You drill that hole straight down, put a screw in it and you're ready to rock. And here we go. This is the assembly. What I'm doing primarily is just filing over any of the squares. I could dog bone it. That's where you see a CNC furniture and whatnot sometimes has like the little dimple at every interior joint, every interior angle. That's so that anything intersecting it with a square edge uh, won't have to interfere with the kerf left by the curve of the blade. I tend to... There's the switch. It's working really well. I'm just practicing to see that it, it's all worked out well. So in, <clears throat> I always say, make it again, make it again, make it again. The first one I made, I was having a lot of difficulty wrapping it because I didn't have it in a vise. You see, I just kind of clamped it to the table. It made it a lot easier to wrap the string. And now I'm getting some deflection there. Maybe because of the uh, material is bad or whatever it is. But I take a piece of the sprue and I'm just banging that into place there. That piece of the sprue is going to create the tension there. It's going to compensate. I also put a lot more string on it this one, hoping I was going to get a little bit more springiness. And it's still the first one actually is a little bit more shootable. But if I was going to get this out as a kit, that's the variable that's really up to the user who's going to make it. I'm just checking to see the throw on it. Here's the cross member that throws it and stops it. It still has a tendency to throw it at the ground a little bit close to it. And I'm just gluing the cup on there. Just a little bit of star bond adhesive. Okay, version two. We have an improved grabby do at the top. And we have, of course, the switch. The switch seems like it's working really well. See that? And all you have to do is just add a screw to it right there. You'll notice on version one, I hadn't really thought this through. It didn't come to me, so I didn't want to let it slow me down. I just wanted to keep moving along with the, the design of the concept. So I figured I would just deal with that later. I knew this was going to be a two-part product development style video. And one thing I noticed is that for some reason, I guess it's a matter of the material. This material is much stronger, even though it's the same sheet of plywood. Right here, I ended up with a little bit of a weak piece of plywood. And you could see how it's starting to bend, maybe. It's starting to pull in, which compromises the spring, which compromises the trajectory and the throw. So I had to take a piece of the sprue and glue it right there to counteract that pulling in. So, good thing I had a piece of the sprue. But one of the most important lessons I learned while making this was seeing this as a kit. A fun visual, a fun concept. I could now cut a couple of these out and just hand them to friends or potentially sell them on the website. But this opens up a whole new door to me. So I wanted to just explain how it's important to just play. I didn't see this when I was working on this. This came to me when I looked at my Illustrator file and started thinking, how can I make this more fun, more visually fun, more interesting? And now if I just hand this to somebody, they get it. If I handed them a pile of parts, they'd be like, what is this CNC junk? So maybe this is still CNC junk. I don't know. It depends on if you like me or not. But now I have a catapult that's not necessarily a catapult, but a delivery system. And let me show you a few examples of the things it can deliver. Don't forget, it's not a catapult. It's a chicken feeder. It's a turkey feeder. It's a cat feeder. It's a smoothie maker. Look at that hole in one. If you believe that, I'll sell you a bridge. It's a pasta maker. Look at all those shots. If you believe that, I'll sell you a bridge. <laughs> it's a fire starter. Look at this hole in one with a cross dissolve, works perfect. 
it's not a catapult, it's a salami tosser. Okay. It's not a catapult, it's a dog toy. If you're still watching, thank you for joining in and I'll try and make this file available in the description below. I'll have a link to a Dropbox file. Anybody can make it. Thank you guys. I love you.